Hello everyone. Welcome welcome back to lecture series on aerospace propulsion. Myself Mardu Pani NK. I'm from Department of Aeronautical Engineering, Institute of Aeronautical Engineering. So uh, in this lecture series on aerospace propulsion, so what exactly we are going to see is that so um, we are going to see in detail about the uh, basic or uh, prim uh, prim primary components of an gas turbine engines like intake how do they work and combustion system as well as the turbo machinery is like compressor and turbine what are the design problems we are facing in this component and all we are going to see in detail okay so as far as in this lecture concern we are going to see brief about what is this propulsion is all about and what are the basic uh, classification of this propulsion system and in that we are going to specifically see something about a, a gas turbine engine and what is the operating principle of uh, gas turbine engine we are going to see in this today's lecture so uh, this term since this course itself having a name of aerospace propulsion first of all we should know what is this propulsion so propulsion means basically it is push forward or drive an object forward okay so uh, from this name we can say that uh, this uh, this is a branch of science which basically deals with this system which we are going to use to move an uh, object forward okay so this propulsion term is derived from uh, two uh, latin words that is pro meaning is a forward pellere means to derive okay so this propulsion system is basically uh, it is about the uh, system which we are going to use to propel a particular uh, device okay so what is this propulsion system means a propulsion system is basically a machine which produces the uh, forward force or what we call it as the thrust force for example you take a uh, our two wheeler or uh, a four wheeler or you take an aircraft any object or any of these uh, vehicles which needs a propulsion system in order to make it move forward so that's what we call it as the propulsion system so what is the need for propulsion system so basically this course is aerospace propulsion we are going to basically deal with the uh, different types of propulsion system we are using in the aerospace industries or aircraft industry okay so what is the need for this propulsion system in the aerospace industry or aircraft industry in sense see you take an aircraft you know how a lift is produced in an aircraft that's basically your lift is produced in the wing of your aircraft so in order to produce the lift your uh, air aircraft has to move through the air or your air has to move over your wing surface so here what we do is that your atmospheric air is still we are trying to move our aircraft in the forward direction because of that movement over the wing uh, we create the pressure difference on the top surface and bottom surface we are able to produce the lift force which is basically making your aircraft fly in the air that is float in the air okay so you could say that without this propulsion system you won't be able to fly the aircraft that is first of all if at all you want to make your aircraft uh, float in the air or uh, lifted in the air you need to have an uh, movement of your aircraft so that movement of aircraft is given by this propulsion system so that movement uh, the propulsion system basically is producing a thrust force so what is this thrust force is basically it's a mechanical force which is produced by your propulsion system by accelerating a mass of gas or air so why do we call it as a gas is because in the combustion chamber of our gas turbine we mix the fuel and burn it so that's why rather than calling it as the air we call it as the gas so thrust is produced by your uh, engine or propulsion system so what are the basic classification of this jet propulsion system in sense we can broadly classify into uh, two categories one is an air breathing propulsion system and non air breathing propulsion system so what is this air breathing propulsion system and what is this uh, non air breathing propulsion system is basically as this name suggests that a particular propulsion system uh, if it is utilizing the atmospheric air for uh, its combustion purpose those type of engine we call it as the air breathing engine so just like how we human we can't survive uh, without air similarly this air breathing engine won't be able to a survive that is we won't be able to operate these um, engines without the uh, atmospheric air so those type of engine what we call it as the air breathing engines okay so most of our aircraft 
or they are using the air breathing engines. Some of the example for these air breathing engines are say you are um, uh, automobiles, vehicle uh, engines are there, right? Uh, that is reciprocating engine. Similarly, gas turbine engine. They are all the best example for the air breathing engines. So next uh, uh, category of the propulsion system is a non-air breathing engine. So what is this non-air breathing engine is that basically this particular propulsion system will have its own stored oxygen supply for its combustion purpose. See, in order to do one combustion, combustion, we need an oxygen. So the source of oxygen for the air breathing engine is from the atmosphere. Whereas for your non-breathing air engine, uh, non-air breathing engines, we will have the stored uh, uh, oxygen in order to do the combustion purpose. So the best example for the uh, non-air breathing engines are the aerospace devices that is uh, rockets as well as missiles uh, in which we will have the stored oxygen uh, for the combustion purpose. So those type of engine what we call it as the non-air breathing engine. So in this aerospace propulsion system, uh, sorry aerospace propulsion course, what type of um, engine we are going to see is that basically we are going to so mainly focusing on the air breathing engines. Okay. In that too, in the air breathing engine, we are not going to see much about the reciprocating engine. We are going to uh, deal with only the gas turbine engine that is different type of gas turbine engine which we are using for the aircraft application. Okay. So what is this gas turbine? It's basically it is a uh, internal combustion engine okay which consists of a compressive combustion chamber and a turbine or you could say it is the uh, internal combustion engine which consists of a, a gas generator that type of uh, engine what we call it as the a gas turbine engine so what exactly this gas turbine engine consists okay if you take any type of gas turbine engine we will have May major three major component one is a compressor a combustion chamber and a turbine okay so these three uh, components will present in all type of gas turbine engine irrespective of whatever the type may be these three component compressor combustion chamber and a turbine they will present in the all type of uh, uh, gas turbine engine so basically these three components combined together we call it as the gas generator so what is the purpose or what is the function of this gas generator is that it is to produce the high temperature and high pressure gas. Okay. What is the function of this gas generator? It is to produce the high temperature and high pressure gas. This high temperature and high pressure gas can be used to produce the shaft power as well as to produce the thrust force. Okay. So a particular engine may be mainly focusing on a shaft power particular engine may be uh, mainly focusing on the uh, thrust power. So irrespective of that, the, for that particular engine, we need a high temperature and high pressure gas, okay, in order to produce either thrust force or shaft power. So this is schematic of a, a general gas turbine engine, okay. So here, as you can see, the major component of your gas turbine engine, it starts with the intake. After intake, we have the compressor and after compressor, we have the combustion chamber and after combustion chamber, we have turbine and we have the nozzle. Okay. So in that, in particular engine, we may not have intake, we may not have exhaust, but these three uh, combustion chamber, compressor and turbine, this will be present in the all type of engine. Okay. So uh, why do we... Uh, so as I mentioned earlier, so we are going to mainly focusing on the uh, gas turbine in this course is that because you see initial days when the aircraft was introduced there we used to have uh, like um, reciprocating engine in order to produce the thrust force just like the engine which we are using in the uh, automobiles either you take a car or two wheeler there we have we have the reciprocating engines. Okay, but in the aircraft industries nowadays, almost all the aircraft, they use the gas turbine rather than the reciprocating engine. Why uh, is that? Uh, why why we are using only gas turbine in the aircraft industry? Why not the reciprocating engine? Is because, you see, first of all, uh, for your aircraft application, anything, any component or any device may should have the uh, 
uh, least amount of weight because the weight of a particular component is going to be more and more you have to produce more amount of lift force okay so more amount of lift force or weight of it is weight is going to be increased so your lift force generated has to be in, will be increased that will result in increased size of your wing area that is one second it is going to increase the weight of your aircraft so as such so we need a compact engine which can produce high amount of uh, thrust force or shaft power that is why we are going with the gas turbine rather than the reciprocating engine and similarly if we are going for the high power okay uh, what happens is that the size of your reciprocating engine is going to be bigger and bigger okay and we'll have so much amount of loss in case of reciprocating engine okay that is why we always go with the uh, gas turbine for the aircraft application and uh, uh, this gas turbine for a same output okay it will have a smaller in size and uh, lighter in weight compared to that of reciprocating engine okay that is why we always go with the gas turbine now so since uh, we are mainly going to focus on the gas turbine we should know the what is the operating principle of this gas turbine okay how does this gas turbine engine works okay so the gas turbine engine any gas turbine engine you take that's basically the thermodynamic process which happens in the uh, turbines gas turbines are basically it is a open type breton cycle okay open type breton cycle in sense the fresh air will enter and it will leave we won't be circulating the uh, working fluid so that's what we call it as the open cycle breton uh, uh, cycle okay so here you take the uh, breton cycle uh, here you see the three major component of a gas turbine which is a compressor combustion chamber and turbine okay so here uh, what happens your air from your atmosphere enters inside the compressor when it enters inside the compressor what happens to the um, what happens to your airflow is that the pressure of your flow will be increased <coughs> okay so the process across your compressor is say we are assuming it to be an isentropic process in case of ideal breton cycle and in case of uh, uh, real breton cycle we will have the adiabatic process in isentropic process means there are no uh, losses across your compressor we are simply by sucking the large amount of air we are increasing the pressure of our incoming flow so you could ask me so why do we need to increase the pressure okay the first or uh, foremost reason why do we need to increase the pressure is that we have to see we have a limited amount of size for our engine right so in that limited amount of space we need to send as much of uh, as much as that uh, of airflow we have to send it through the engine because the thrust produced by your engine is depending on the how much amount of airflow is passing through that engine as such in order to increase the uh, mass flow through a, a passage what we do is that we introduce this compressor we suck the air and compress it okay by compressing it we are able to increase the pressure and another function for your compressor why do we need to increase the uh, pressure of your flow is that you see whenever from the state law p is equal to rho rt whenever we increase the uh, pressure of our uh, flow or fluid what is going to happen to its temperature its temperature is going to increase okay so why do we need to increase the temperature of your flow is that that will make the combustion process more easier okay that is why we need the compressor okay and in the combustion chamber what we do in the combustion chamber is that see for any uh, device to work we need to supply a work input or we need to have an energy supply see even for us to work or to do any work we need an energy right similarly in order for your engine to work it needs an continuous supply of energy so what do we do in the combustion chamber is that basically we are supplying that energy needed for that engine operation that is by burning the fuel in the combustion chamber say your fuel which is a, your energy in the chemical uh, form that chemical energy okay what we do by doing the combustion we are able to increase the temperature so basically in the combustion chamber we are converting the uh, chemical energy into thermal energy okay so this high pressure so pressure is increased across the compressor itself and when the combustion when the flow is goes to the combustion chamber there 
the pressure will remain constant. We will simply increase the temperature by doing the combustion process. And when the flow is passing to the turbine, where what is going to happen is that the turbine is going to extract the, that is, it is going to convert the thermal energy into mechanical energy. Okay. So why do we need a turbine? Say, you know that why we need a compressor is to increase the pressure. Combustion chamber is to add the energy. But why do we need the turbine is that, say, for example, we may need to produce the shaft power. Or, first of all, a basic need for your turbine is itself to rotate or to power the compressor, right? See, in order to increase the pressure, we need to operate our compressor continuously. So, if the compressor has to be uh, work, uh, like rotated continuously means it, uh, it needs an external power. That power is given by your uh, turbine, okay? So, when the flow is passing through this turbine, uh, some of the thermal energy will be converted into shaft power. And remaining flow, flow which is passing through the nozzle, it may be produced as the uh, thrust force. So basically, uh, this uh, Breton cycle uh, here, what we what is happening is that uh, adiabatic. That is, is a real cycle. Uh, one to two is a uh, adiabatic process where we do the compression across your inlet and compressor, and in the combustion chamber, that is, we add the uh, heat under constant pressure. And once again, when the flow is passing through the turbine, we uh, do the expansion both in the turbine as well as in the exhaust nozzle. The expansion in exhaust nozzle will result in thrust production. The expansion in the turbine will result in the uh, production of shaft power. Okay. So uh, with this, I um, will finish this uh, today's lecture. So what we have discussed in today's class, basically, we have started with what is this course is all about and what are the different types of propulsion system and what are the uh, what is the working principle of a gas turbine engine and we have seen the ideal actual as, as well as the actual uh, Breton cycle okay so uh, in the next class we are going to see the different types of gas turbine engines like share and subscribe hit the bell icon for more updates